Namaste. So, <laughs> this is the first secret video. Huh? What am I going to say, right? Am I going to give some secret method that I don't talk about in public? Huh? Maybe I'll talk about sex. <laughs> Look, <laughs> all the secrets are already out. Okay, the secret that is not out is the one that's hidden within you. In other words, why aren't you making spiritual advancement? Why is your life problematic? Why are you suffering? Because you are not a disciple. There's plenty of gurus around, huh? Aren't there? It's an oversupply of gurus. Everybody wants to be a guru. But nobody wants to be a disciple. That's the problem. A couple of stories to illustrate this. There is a great saint, Milarepa. Or was it Tilopa? Yeah, Tilopa, Milarepa's guru went to a spiritual master who was a phony. Huh? He got his followers to come up with all kinds of fantastic stories about his miracles and this and that and promote him. And then he traveled around everywhere collecting donations and he split them with his guys. So he was like the first, <laughs> the first California guru But Tilopa was such a great disciple that he attained anyway. Why do we have pictures of gurus and gods and worship them? Uh, there's incense burning right now offered to them. Huh? Uh, pictures are just bogus, right? You can't really love a picture, can you? No. But you can love what the picture represents, and you can serve what the picture represents. See, this is Guru Tattva. Nobody understands Guru Tattva these days. When I was three and a half years old, I was sitting in the church and I saw the stained glass window of Jesus, you know, praying in the garden and the light is coming down on his face. And I went, he's talking with God. Yeah. And my very next thought was, I want to do that. And I knew that I could do it. Why? Because Jesus also said, and they would read this out, you know, in the, in the lesson, on Sunday, that whatever I do, you can also do, or even better. So it was like, why not? Huh? Go for it. But then I thought, wait a minute, I'm just a kid. <laughs> I'm still just a kid. <laughs> I need a teacher. I need an adult, somebody who can show me how to do this. Because obviously, if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? So I must need a teacher. And I started looking for a teacher and I looked for 24 years. Uh, I already told the story about how I gave up the MIT scholarship to study music and then I went to New York and I had a successful career as a composer. So I got burned out on that after a couple of years. <laughs> music business is cutthroat, man. It's a mafia. So I left that and I went to the West Coast and I became a hippie and I started going up and down the West Coast looking for a guru. And I visited probably every famous spiritual teacher and they were all bogus. <laughs> Finally, my Indian music teacher, Ali Akbar Khan, introduced me to my guru, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. So, even so, I immediately recognized him as my guru. 
It took me another four years to meet his requirements. No intoxication, no illicit sex, no meat eating, no gambling. And that includes mental speculation. So it took me four years to go from where I was to where I could meet those requirements. And as soon as I could, I approached him and requested initiation. Then he took me to India, and then here we are today. So I served him and his teaching for over 30 years. And I don't mean half-heartedly or on weekends. I mean full-time every day, beginning at 4.30 in the morning, just like he trained me to do. He was strict. He was intense. If you displeased him, you could expect to get a chewing out worthy of a Marine drill, drill sergeant. But let me tell you something. The things I learned from him, sometimes uh, over my, the, the tremendous objections of my mind, huh? why do I have to get up so early in the morning and chant this stupid prayer? I don't even know what it means. <laughs> Those things that he taught me now have become the foundation for my jnana. Why do you think I pound it again and again that before you attempt jnana, you have to have karma and bhakti pretty much perfected? Why do I pound on that? That's my experience. I breezed through Buddha's four paths and eight jhanas uh, in about three years and the whole tripitaka. So... <laughs> The other monks are like standing still that whole time. And I'm just like, Phew. how could I do it? They couldn't believe that I did it. They refused to believe. They told me I was lying that I had those experiences. So <laughs> why? Because it was so different from their experience. Their experience was try and try and try and fail again and again until finally they just give up and, you know, go out and sell drugs or something to support the monastery. Instead of teaching meditation. They can't even do meditation. How can they teach it? So, meanwhile, here I come. Zoom! In five years I was done with being a Buddhist monk. And not done as a failure. Done as a success. And I went, I went higher. I looked and I found Ramana Maharshi. Huh? And in many ways, the greatest guru of them all, Mahaparyavar, Sri Chandra Shekharendra, huh? the 36th Shankaracharya of Kanchi. So this is guru. See, this is guru. The connection with guru is not in the mind. Well, it is in the mind, but it's principally in the heart. Okay? I was set up for this. I mean, totally. <laughs> My fifth house karma <laughs> and second house karma is totally intertwined with my search for a guru and finally accepting a guru. And he basically, emotionally, became my father. I accepted him as my father, that person who I should emulate to achieve success. And I did. Let me give you one small example. One of the services he had me do in between trips to India was to edit his books. And especially Chaitanya Charitamrita, I was an editor and I was in the LA office of the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust you can ask anybody who was there. Uh, and that's, that's where I was. You never saw me anywhere else. I was always, I practically, literally slept in my office because I was so into what I was doing and I learned so much. I read every single word of that book in at least five times. And I mean, it's a whole shelf of books, you know. 
24 volumes or something. <laughs> so, and Sanskrit. I was a Sanskrit editor and a continuity editor. So I had to go through the Sanskrit word by word to make sure everything was correct. And Bengali. Bengali. <laughs> so, what I learned from that, my God, set me up spiritually to master bhakti. Uh, spontaneous devotional service, spontaneous ecstasy of love of God. Uh, and I did, but it also gave me the skills I needed to start my technical writing career, which is what supported my whole life, you know, two marriages, 10 trips to India, you know, everything, right? For over 25 years until I retired in 2001. So the guru's instructions, if you follow them, will set you up not only for spiritual success, but even for material success. See, this is guru. This is a real guru. Real guru just takes your whole life to a higher level. Because of his grace, uh, the trouble that he took to instruct me, I was not an easy, <laughs> as you can imagine, uh, set me up for life, basically. Now, I've been teaching on the internet publicly for more than seven years now. And still, nobody has approached me as an honest-to-goodness, bona fide disciple. So what can I do? I can't sell it cheap. huh? There is no discount available. I'm sorry. There's no shortcut either. You have to do the work. I can't do it for you, even though I might want to. It's just not possible. So... That's why I say, accept a guru, search out a guru. Any guru is better than no guru, as Tilopa illustrates. Even a guru who cheats you uh, is better than no guru. And I know your parents cheated you, your teachers cheated you, the government's cheating you, everybody's cheating you, right? The internet, everything is cheating. That's this world, it's Maya. The world of Maya, the world of false promises, the world of broken dreams. That's why we have to get out. Now, the funny thing about it is, if we approach it in the right way, <laughs> this world is paradise. <laughs> but you have to approach it without desires. See, like Shankaracharya said, the... Uh, Qualification, the adhikar, for Advaita, for Vedanta, uh, is sannyas. That's why I took sannyas. Not because I needed to take sannyas. No. Because you need somebody who gives a good example, who doesn't cheat, who follows the rules, who does it right, who doesn't take shortcuts. So that's why I took sannyas. And I was instructed to take sannyas. I didn't take it by my own choice. And that's the way it has to be. You have to have a qualification, the adhikar. And you also have to have the permission. Whose permission? The guru. Now, who is the guru? One you accept in your heart. Who speaks the message of Brahman accurately, completely, purely, without a trace of personal desire. See? Uh, the reason this video was delayed a little while was because, beginning about six weeks ago, I was having premonitions of death. And, you know, on the spiritual path, this happens from time to time, especially if you're on the right path. You'll feel like you're dying. And usually it's just the ego that's dying. Some part of the ego, some part of the false personality. 
But in this case, it seemed, you know, pretty serious. So I went to my astrologer. I, I consulted with him before I made this video because I didn't want to come on and, and give you any false information. So it looks like you're going to have to put up with me for a while longer. <laughs> he says, I'm not dying. Maybe some part of me is dying, the part of me that wants to enjoy this world, the part of me that wants to be an individual. That's definitely on its way out, on its last gasp. <laughs> the day before yesterday, I took a nap in the afternoon. And it was a long nap, about three hours. And in the middle of this nap, during deep sleep, Shushupta, I woke up. It was the first time this ever happened. And this is one of the big mileposts, huh? waking sleep. Not lucid dreaming. Lucid dreaming is easy. But waking sleep, you have to have the grace of Shiva to experience that. Huh? So, and now I know. <laughs> Now the goal is very, very clear. Huh? It was always pretty clear, but now it's like really clear that I have that experience. So this path, you see, it just goes on and on and on. Huh? But there are certain mileposts, and one of the mileposts is initiation by the guru. If you don't have it, you got to get it, man. And there's so little time left. Every day, there's less and less time left. I mean, in one sense, there's life after life, but do you really want to come back to this shit again? I don't. Everybody's cheating. There's only one person who's not, and that's the guru. So you can search for the guru in different ways, through books, other media, or whatever. Uh, don't accept a spiritual group, because groups, especially in these days, are all full of cheating. But a personal relationship with a qualified teacher is absolutely necessary. And that can't be impersonal. You have to show up. You have to take the seed. What are you going to do, you know? Can't be done on, online. Sorry. Can't be automated either. Technology is such bullshit. <laughs> anyway. So... I was having all kinds of thoughts and uh, figurations about how I should present on this channel. And anything that I could think of that was really worthwhile, like Nad Yoga, like really deep Bhakti, like, uh, you know, Vedanta, or any, anything that's really, in my mind, <laughs> a valuable thing to learn can't be presented to someone unless they're a disciple. They have to be willing to get up early in the morning and practice. And nobody's doing that. Make, prove me wrong. Huh? I challenge you. Show me a video of you doing these practices, like prayers to the guru, like Gayatri Mantra, like so many things that we've presented. Huh? And with the clock saying, you know, 4.15 a.m. Huh? I challenge you. Because so far, all the so-called disciples I've had or met or whatever have not been serious. When I transitioned my teaching from Vaidhi Bhakti to Raganuga Bhakti, huh, all my so-called disciples left me not only left me, betrayed me, tried to blackmail me, tried to extort me, uh, pu published revenge porn all over the internet. This is, this is my experience with disciples, both Western and Eastern. But I kept my promises. I refunded everybody's money just like I said I would. They thought I was not going to do it, and then he could make more trouble. But the bastards, I did exactly what I promised, even though it was wrong, because they're just going to misuse the money. 
but I did it because I said I would, just like I made this video because I said I would, just like I made this whole channel. See, so unless a disciple has that kind of integrity, they're not really a disciple. Uh, unless somebody has the integrity, you know, to, to uh, study and practice 20, 25, 30 years, 50 years after the disappearance of his guru, uh, he's not a real disciple. He's just a phony. <laughs> There's more phony disciples than there are phony gurus. <laughs> So prove me wrong. Huh? Show me you've got what it takes. Because even if you start now, you're only going to have maybe five years with me. I'm not going to be around that much longer. Come on, be realistic. So especially if nobody interesting shows up, I'm going to be like, I'm out of here. So I'm already losing interest in everything else. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, that's what this group is. I'm not going to drive this group. You're going to drive this group by your inquiries. See, one should approach a spiritual master, why? With hearing, shravanam, with chanting, kirtanam, huh? and with inquiries. Not just superficial inquiries, not just intellectual inquiries, but deep, heartfelt Doubts and questions. Guruji, why can't I meditate? Why do I keep falling down into sex life? Why, why, why? Huh? You have to ask. Not just theoretical questions out of the books, but the ones that are real in your own life. See, that's disciple. That's what this channel is for. You can approach me. You can ask me questions. And if it's a short answer, I can give it on, uh, you know, by text. And if it requires more in-depth, uh, then I can make videos on it. So that's the deal here. And if you don't participate, I'm going to write you a couple of times and try to, try to ask, you know, what's going on. And if you still don't respond, then I'm going to probably just, you know, terminate your account. Because I want people here who are doing it, who are participating, who are serious. That's why I'm doing this. And I'd rather have one actual serious friend, huh? not necessarily student or disciple, but a friend who actually gets it, you know, who actually understands this teaching. Uh, I'd rather have one like that than, you know, a hundred phonies. So, you know, uh, keep me interested in you. I can help you. You know, but you have to be the kind of person who deserves it. I have integrity. So if, if you don't know what I mean by that, watch our series on being integrity. Huh? You have not only to have integrity, you have to be integrity. Uh, then you'll be successful at whatever you do. Om Tatsat. Aung Arihi Aung.